think um, what we've been doing over the last five years is diversifying and working closer together with a lot of other labels. So um, I think in-house there's not just K7, we have not now a few other labels that, that we basically work on, Strut, BBE, Gold Dust, and we also work very closely with, um, with a lot of labels we distribute, um, Get Physical, Ghostly, um, Lex, um, there's some 10, 15 labels um, we do. So basically, that's our game plan to diversify, like everyone at this table as well, you look into events, into booking agencies, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. that anyway is part of uh, the picture you work um, with the artist. Yeah, I mean, when we're signing things now, are we signing for all rights? So we're signing the track and uh, it's, it's just the master rights, so we're signing master and publishing, touring, merchandise, everything. I mean, you know, when you offer it, when you put a deal on the table, is it including everything now? Uh, yes and no. Every situation is unique and there's very few 360 deals we do where we're part of everything, but we do put it on the table and we do uh, discuss it up front. If an artist wants us to be part of um, their live site, fine. We will work it and we will ask for a cut as well. But we do have to focus our efforts and what happened in the past very often is that you're not part of publishing, you're not part of uh, the live side, yet you keep working those uh, areas as well. People knock on your door and they're like, well, struggling with the tour and can't you pay tour support and can't you do this? Right now, we do very few 360 deals, but either we're a partner and we benefit or we're not a partner and don't call us. Mm -hmm. And Paulie, um, you know, Cocoon, you know, obviously, you know, speaks for itself. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a name that you associate with you know, great music, you know, great lifestyle and everything. When you're signing, are you signing, you know, for your territory? Are you signing for the world? Um, do you retain all rights? Um, again, do you have options in there? Or is it, is today it's about just getting one record and moving on? Or is it developing artists? Oh, it depends on the artist. I mean, if you sign a tracks exclusive worldwide, we have normally a publishing company as well, but we never use them, just for Sven. When we started as a label 10 years ago, uh, the thing was we said, okay, let's just do a compilation label. So we started our series with uh, the ABC compilation. We released 12 tracks, 12 artists, exclusive, six vinyl box, colored vinyl. And uh, then we start with the Sven Fed Mix CD series in Ibiza. And uh, then comes the first friends, first artists, first producers, where we work in early times with Hard House and IQ. And I said, hey, I would like to do uh, an artist album. I said, okay, let's do an artist album. And then comes the first 12 inches out. And then like two, three years later, I said to Sven, hey, we're on the same level like we've been before with Hard House and IQ. We do artists, albums, we do the 12 inches. Now the compilations, now we're back to relabel. But our focus is uh, if we release music, the most important things, especially for, for 12 inch records, must explode it on the dance floor. There we come from, we come from the club, it must work in the club, must be a great track. And uh, now we are here after 10 years and still in business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone. Uh, Spence is here from uh, Distributor. I mean, he's he's selling a lot of vinyl still. Um, Mark saying he's selling vinyl and uh, Get Physical is selling vinyl. So there's still some vinyl sales around, but um, there's also a, a, a trend. You know, we all know <laughs> vinyls are, are not what they used to be. Um, I'm hearing a lot of people talking about compilations on CDs becoming just digital only. Is the CD still going to be... The dominant in the next five years, or is the CD going to disappear? Is are all compilations going to be digital compilations? Um, anyone want to take that on, Mark? I think that'll be determined by the uh, the opportunity of point of sale. You know, um, as the shops diminish, you you'll have to tailor your your sales process to the market. You know, and if there's no high street shops, where well, you're going to sell it? You're gonna, you know, you're going to be forced to go digital. So I think that will that will mould the way we shape compilations in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, Dave, you've um, you know suffered in America with a lot of retailers closing down. Is it is it some somewhere where you're going? Is, is Ultra going digital over the next five years? Or is well, yeah, I, I think uh, you know physical albums in general will be done in the next five years. Uh, you know, between MP3s and now streaming is becoming so big that uh, 
you know, people don't need the, the actual CD anymore. You can download music onto your phone. So what's the point of having a, a fossil CD player Walkman, you know? So uh, I think uh, it's still going to be a collector's item for a while, but physical sales will be done in five years. Anyone in the audience, what do you think about that? I mean, CD sale, is a CD going to disappear? I mean, I remember when CD started, you know, it's like, Jesus, what is that? So now am I going to see it disappear in my lifetime? It's, it's a weird concept. Anyone, any comments on that in the audience? A CD is going to be here? In five years? We all agree they're not going to be here, or they are going to be here? I think they are. They are going to be here? It'll be smaller, but it'll still be here, because there's still people that want to have it in their hands. Mm -hmm. It's just like they've got their books on their shelves, they still want the CDs on their shelves. Mm -hmm. it's, you're always going to get them. Yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting it's just one. It's going to be harder I mean, to find. Where are you going to find those CDs yeah. when when the stores are closing down and it's going to be harder and harder to find CDs? I think the record labels, you know, yeah, I think yeah, the online thing, like you say, Spence, Amazon will still do well, and I think artist albums will, will you know have more longevity than compilations. But even those, you know, we, you know, how many tracks off an album do you actually really like? When you've got the chance to go on iTunes, I'll have them four. I've got to pay twelve quid for all twelve, but I only like four, so. Yeah, I think the artist albums were out slightly out, you know, outlast. But you said that uh, the, the 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 sales trend is slightly. Well, different I, I think that. in America, just because we're so ahead with the digital sales that uh, it's we're seeing it in our in our physical sales that uh, the digital is definitely becoming. Uh, it's going to be in the next few years uh, the uh, more than fifty percent. It's right now. It's almost at the fifty percent mark. You know, it's it's it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you see Dan from Canada at the back there. He sells. Probably 15,000 Pasha CDs in Canada, physical CDs. I mean, great numbers. And he, he's thinking of, of canning his, um, his physical format and going all digital. Um, I mean, Dan, is physical on its way out? Well, in, in, in America, they're at roughly 38% digital sales at the moment. In Japan, they're over 40. In Korea, they're over 40% digital projections by all these Wall Street firms that have been looking at buying companies is that by 2012, on a worldwide level, digital is about half of the market. The rest would be CDs still. Um, <laughs> Europe is lagging behind a little bit in the digital, but in America, they're expecting they're going to be at around 70% digital by 2012. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, you know, from where I'm sitting, this is fantastic news because, you know, <laughs> it costs me so much less to put out a record. Um, if, they, if, if it's the format the public want, if it's digital format, so be it, you know, go with God. Um, what does everyone else think? I mean, are you happy to see the demise of CDs? Um, is it great? That's a cost I don't have to bear anymore. <laughs> Well, I think also it's it's a matter of what artist you are dealing with because it's like uh, uh, if it's it's an artist who's aimed over twenty five, uh, then you can you will actually shift a lot of more physical CDs than uh, the youth, which is you know going for the mobile stuff. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think I mean I have a scoop. We will still be doing CDs in five years, also compilations, um, but fifty percent. Um, that for every label that's different, you know, for every project that's even different. So you'll be just looking at what does it mean for you. We don't have, I doubt we will have 50% digital sales. If, um, if, they, if yeah. you know, if the cost of putting a record out is, is less, does this mean the checkbook's bigger for A&R? Um, does this give you, is this, is this a good thing? Does this give you, you know, more, more ammunition to go out and sign new things and sign bigger things because, hey, you're just putting it out on digital, you've, you've you shouldn't have released a lot of money, you know, you've saved yourself a lot of money. So, hey, in our eyes, how, how is this going to affect you if CDs go? Um, does it mean you've got more money to spend? Tim? Um, <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, no, it won't be because it's a smaller business. Mm -hmm. Your revenue yeah. numbers are going to be weighed down ultimately under the line. You're not going to have a lot more money. We, so. we haven't reached a tipping point yet where it, it, it might, the the, the digital sales well, well, I mean, making up for the loss in CD know. sales. No, but are they, are they, are they going to be? I mean, if the only format is, 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 is digital, you know, and, you know, there's still 10,000 sales to be made, but they're all going to be digital, you know. The margin's are not there, Steve. Hmm? The margin's Margin's less, but so are, so are your costs. But I think um, we've come from... You still from have to market it, though. Mm. Yeah. We've come from an era where we've started to do compilations where digital outsell physical from day one. Mm -hmm. So that we're in a slightly different position. So that tailors the way we make compilations, you know, and that makes go back to the drawing board thinking, right, okay, if I'm going to do a compilation, 
and my you know and my, my largest point of revenue is from uh, is from digital well let's get exclusive tracks let's, let's rethink the way we put comp compilations together and i think that's key you know it's like you need to move with the times you can't just keep still working in the same model as before if that's the trend and i think we all know eventually that will be the trend it's not about changing what it's about how we, we put compilations together that will make the difference mm -hmm. um are we all signing tracks for the world, or are we signing for the territory? I mean, uh, Tim back there came up with a good uh, a good line, which I like. He said, uh, when you sign a record, think global and that's local. Um, are we all signing for the world? I know I'm as much as possible signing for the world. Uh, if I can't have the world, I'm kind of not interested. Um, or I'm less interested because, you know, my avenues of exploitation and revenue are severely chopped. Um, Kenneth, what are you doing? Are you signing for the world? We sign every artist for the world and we sign, uh, we won't work with the artist unless we have three albums. So you're signing um, three albums and the world? Yeah. And because we want to develop the artist together, it's a marriage and we want to you know, build the steps up to, uh, you know, and we want to have ambitions and so on. That's the and Pauli, what about you? Of course, we signed for the world, and but I think, like, uh, if you sell, we'll sell on Beatboard, it's already, like, a worldwide release, so you don't need to license somewhere in other territories. I mean, we had, like, uh, Roman Flügel gets North track, that was the only track that we licensed to other territories, but as a cocoon, our music works more or less the, mostly in the clubs. Yeah. And is 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 it, you know, is it our, these days about building catalog, and developing your brand name, your label name, and having people trusting that name and, and buying into that name, or, you know, is is it still you know drive? Do you have to have name, superstar artists, you know, to drive that label name, or are you driving the superstars? Are you creating superstars? Um, Tim. Um. Catch twenty two question really, Steve. And, you know, it's kind of what what comes first, the, the superstars or the content. And, mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't really work like that, does it? You know, you, you kind of you know you set up a label, you start running it, you sign some people, they get big, they get famous, you get more content. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, or, or 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 do you set up a label with the, the remit to go out and sign big names? It you know, it depends. It depends what you get. You, your game plan is really. Well, it's, it's interesting on this this panel. You know, there's. You've got some association to majors, Kenneth has, and I guess all of us have little tentacles there, but there's no major labels on this panel. I mean, is, you know, major labels relevant in dance music at all? Um, you know, are they? <laughs> David? No. No? no? <coughs> I think they become more distributors, and I think a lot of the, the tendency the last five or six years has been the independent has become the new majors and mm -hmm. then they kind of like gone back and used the majors as distributors yeah that's, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's yes. the way that we've, we've changed our businesses that you know m most of our labels are now distributed by emi music services which is a, a new thing that they set up that um helps to distribute labels but also provides them with marketing support and and other functions that you might need Rather than being actually part of the major, you'd, you'd be actually distributed by them and, and helped helped by them. Um, a, a, a singles and uh, you know what effect does having number one in the bush charts, the cool cuts, um, Pete Tong essential selection, is that still have an impact on sales? Um, no. No. <laughs> no, no, not in the slightest. Yeah, it's I mean, you know, I, I tend to agree. I mean, I've had. You know, Bush Chart Numbers and Cool Cuts and Pete Tong plays, and that record has sold no more than the track that had no attention from anybody. And is it just simply, you know, the music stands up for himself and people are not looking at these charts anymore? Um, you know, because before, I mean, it was essential. You get on these things and you have sales. Um, what's happened? What's changed? I just think the whole model's changed. You used to look at that and there was a hype process. Now the hype is if you're in the top ten of Beatport, standard, that's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. That's your promo, that's your profile builder. Not Buzz Shot No One's great, it's all very well and good, but you know, like you said, there's no translation between that and sales. Yeah, you know? I mean, you know, is Beatport now, you know, does everyone think, is Beatport now the, the holy grail, getting that top ten at all costs, and then you've got some sales? Is that, is that everyone's focus? 
Well, it, it's a huge promotional tool, I think, with uh, Beefport. Uh, the, the club charts, the buzz charts, all, all those dance charts that you have DJs report to, they're not proven because you just have a DJ that's writing down, yeah, he's playing the record, you have no idea where it's being played. So you have no actual, uh, you have no gauge of whether it's selling or not, as opposed to Beatport, where you actually see the sales. Yeah, I mean, uh, one thing I love about, uh, you know, Beatport, you know, every time you have a sale, it's usually to a, a DJ who's going to be playing it in the club, so it's... You get paid and you get promoted at the same time. Um, it's a wonderful thing, right? The buzz chart is just a person's opinion chart. You know, mm -hmm. it's not sales chart. What matters to us is sales. You know, mm -hmm. I don't care if so and so likes it. I care if the general public and buys it. That's the criteria, really. We yeah. should focus on. Ken, we work completely different. I don't give a shit about buzz charts and stuff like that because <laughs> I think it's irrelevant. I Quite think what that. is in. <laughs> What is important for us as a label is we, we hired a guy who's sitting in New York who does bloggings around the world and we try to, um, to do things that people would talk on bloggings or talk in cafes so it's kind of like word of mouth rather than being you know number 10 in the beatport chart because the bloggings has to start first and then you go in, then we enter beatport and stuff like that. So, so that's, uh, that's the new... Um the promotion is, is um, employed the bloggers, get some student who's hitting 200 bloggers and chatting about a record. Never the mind the DJ, um, Pete Tong's playing it. It's kind of here and there. Well, I think, I mean, you need obviously you need ro radio promo, of course you do. That's a very much part of any, the process of releasing any record. But the onus is not on now to get number one in the bar chart and cool car chart. I mean, Kids don't reference that. That's the bottom line. We do. We may look at that as an old school barometer, but that's not relevant to now. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree, agree, but I still would like Pete to play my record once in a while. Oh, of course. He is. <laughs> no, if, if you're chasing UK radio, then, you know, if Pete plays your record, then great. You know, you've, you've got that all important first rung on the specialist playlist ladder, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a window to, to Radio 1 daytime and mm -hmm. hit record manner, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone got any questions in the audience? Um, you know, obviously things have changed a little bit. Um, there's no majors up here. We're all talking about bloggers rather than <coughs> promo people. Um, we're talking about the demise of CDs. We're signing everything for the world. In the past, you know, you couldn't sign everything for the world. Um, I remember at Subliminal, we used to always sign for the world, but everyone hated us for it. Now it seems it's common. <laughs> um, any comments from anybody? Um, yeah, hello, my name is Ingmar Lowe from Move In Sounds. You just talked about uh, digital distribution of compilations. Mm -hmm. And um, as long as you can buy single songs of these compilations, is uh, the system of the compilation not diluted? Because a compilation is you listen from beginning to the end, the DJ takes you on a journey, but if you just pick up the, the nice bits, it's not a compilation anymore, it's like a single mm -hmm. sales. It's a marketing tool. Tom? Oh, nice there we go. On um, Beatport, <laughs> Beatport at the moment, um, out there, where there's there's yeah some great comments on um, USB stick as a physical format. Yeah. Whether you'd actually invest in that. Um, yeah. Or uh, it's just the carrying device for for digital. It, it's been suggested to 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 me at Passage a few times. You know, um, you know, sell, um, put your records on a USB and give everyone two megs worth of space to put everything else on. Um, I don't know. Has anyone embraced that? I, I'm kind of a bit. Wary of it, um, you know. What's the point? To be fair, I mean, it's just another version of a CD. If you're going to stop selling CDs, why are you going to sell USBs? You know, it is what it is. Well, you know, the USB. I mean, you know, they can carry other things on there as well. You know, they can, you yeah, know, you do their work do, on there. If you're you know, looking I mean, to do like a, a fan thing, then you know, it's good in that respect, I guess, because you, you can put videos and you know that malarkey on. Anyone doing USBs over there? No. How many no. USBs do you need? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah let's like forget about the USB sticks, huh? <laughs> <laughs> USB? No. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Yes, sir. Hi there, Billy Barry, Guru Josh Productions. I just want to comment a little bit on the what comes first, content or superstar, and just to add that there's precious little wrong with uh, putting up satellite dishes when you're a bit hard up for cash. I'm not saying there isn't. Yeah, I mean, fantastic. I've got one myself. I don't think he put it in, but I have one here as well. <laughs> First of all, big thanks to uh, Mr. Binzer for the support he gave us. Straight in at number three, purely based on content, not superstar status. Mm -hmm. Big thank you to David for the confidence he's shown with us at Ultra. But basically,